Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're starting a brand new Let's Talk Lore series titled The Reign of Tal Ray, where we will examine Tal Ray's life and reign as the second emperor of the Wei Dynasty. So starting with episode 1, let's first take a look at Tal Ray's childhood and his path towards the throne. Born to Tal Pi and Lady Jin, Tal Ray's exact birth year is a topic of historical debate as the records of Three Kingdoms actually give conflicting documentations. When recording Tal Ray's death, the records state that Tal Ray died on January 22, 239, at the age of 36, which would mean that he was born before January of 204. But the records also state that Tal Ray was first made into a Marquise in the year 220, when he was 15, which implies that he was born sometime in 206. And in case you're confused about the math here, traditionally in China, when you are born, you are one instead of zero. Now, between these two dates, most modern historians believe that the 204 date is simply impossible, as Cao Cao would not have captured the city of Ye until August of 204, which would imply that Cao Rui was ready at least seven months old by then, and is actually the son of Yuan Xi, who was Lady Zhen's husband at the time. This, of course, is a common online conspiracy theory, which makes no logical sense for a multitude of reasons. First, no matter how smitten Cao Pi was with Lady Zhen at first sight, Cao Cao would never have allowed his eldest surviving son to make her his main wife, if she already had a son, with the enemy that he was still fighting against. Certainly, given Cao Cao's own history and personal fetish with widows, he probably would have allowed Cao Pi to take her as a concubine, but there is absolutely no reason to make her into the main wife and cover up the fact that she already had a son. Second, if Cao Cao had Yuan Xi's only son, then wouldn't using this son against Yuan Xi make more sense than adopting him as his first grandson? Furthermore, it would be impossible to cover up the fact that he was Yuan Xi's son, as Yuan Xi and many others in the north would have known the truth, and since it would take Cao Cao at least another three years to wipe out Yuan Xi, it would be impossible to cover this fact up from historical documents even if they tried. Lastly, the best explanation for the difference between the two dates is that Cao Rui actually altered the imperial calendar twice in the middle of his reign, and these alterations were eventually reversed back by his heir Cao Fang after Cao Rui's death, so these two adjustments most likely explain the two extra year difference as the year Cao Rui received his marquis title was prior to him becoming emperor and thus making these calendar changes, but his death date was recorded down in history after his heir Cao Fang took over. Now, if you're wondering how one can change the calendar, you have to understand that ancient China did not number their calendars according to Jesus' birth, so there is no year zero, and thus no year 204 or year 206. Calendars were given names by the ruling emperor. For example, when Cao Pi first became emperor, he set the calendar name as Huang Chu, which means the yellow origins or the yellow beginning, and it's meant to symbolize a new dynasty that follows the five phase element of Earth, which is represented by the color yellow, as the Han was fire, so Earth naturally succeeded according to the five phase theory. Then people would go on to refer to the first year of Cao Pi's reign as the first year of Huang Chu, then the second, and so forth. When Cao Rui first took over after Cao Pi's death, he used his father's calendar for one more year before changing the name to Tai He, which means Supreme Peace. But Cao Rui would have a bad habit of changing calendar names, which is slightly uncommon for most emperors as he would switch to Qinglong, which means Azure Dragon, seven years into his rule, before changing it again to Jingchu five years later. But because every time he changes the calendar, that particular year becomes both the final year of the last calendar name and the first year of the new calendar name, 
you end up double counting two of the years, which explains how the math doesn't add up. As Cao Rui only ruled for thirteen years, but his first calendar lasted seven years, his second calendar lasted five, before his final one lasted three for a total of fifteen. And these two double counted years is why the records made the mistake with his age. Now this is a rather large tangent, but I feel it's important to clearly state that Cao Rui was not Yuan Xi's son. Especially since Yuan Xi was stationed away in the Yu province, while the city of Ye was constantly under siege from 202 to 204, for him to just drop by just to get his wife pregnant. Now, with that established, let's continue with Cao Rui's childhood, as he was described to be a very handsome boy with a pretty face, who was not only curious and eager to learn, but also someone with a photographic memory. And because of this, his grandfather Cao Cao. Enjoyed having him by his side, as even before the age of ten, Cao Rui often stood with Cao Cao's many attendants while Cao Cao attended court matters or during feasts. And when Cao Cao learned that Cao Rui had taken a particular interest in reading and studying the legal codes and law, Cao Cao stated that the third generation of his clan is now in good hands, as Cao Rui was another major factor. In why Cao Cao ultimately picked Cao Pi as heir over Cao Zhi. Not only was Cao Cao involved in Cao Rui's education from a young age, he also started to bring Cao Rui with him on campaigns once Cao Rui was a bit older, to show him warfare firsthand. In 216, when Cao Cao launched his campaign against Sun Quan at Ru Xu Kou to repay Sun Quan's 215 siege of Hefei, Cao Rui and his younger sister. Princess Dongxiang were both taken away from their mother, Lady Jin, as they traveled with the army. Of course, at the time, Cao Rui was just ten years old, and his younger sister was even younger. But Cao Cao did have his own wife, and their grandmother, Lady Bian, accompanied them as well. But essentially, Cao Rui was raised very much like his own father, Cao Pi. As he focused on not only scholarly pursuits, but also had a taste of the harsh realities of military campaigns from a very young age. But of course, Grandpa Cao Cao would die of illness in 220, when Cao Rui was just 15 years old, and with his father Cao Pi now ascending to become the King of Wei before usurping the Han as the first Emperor of the Wei Dynasty. Cao Rui would be first made into a marquis in 220, as he would be given the title of Wu De Hou, which means the Marquis of Martial Virtue. Cao Pi would also assign the Confucian scholar Zheng Cheng to be Cao Rui's grand tutor, and when Cao Pi finally usurped the Han, Cao Rui also received a promotion to his title, as it became the Duke of Qi. But while Cao Rui's life has been smooth sailing so far, his first challenge would arise in June of 221, just month after he was made duke. As disaster would strike when Cao Pi sentenced Cao Rui's birth mother, Lady Jin, to death, and as collateral damage, Cao Rui was also demoted back to the Marquis rank, as he will pick up a new title called the Marquis of Pingyuan. Now this became a very precarious time for Cao Rui. As while、well, his father Cao Pi had been the emperor for over half a year, he had made no intentions to name an official empress or a crown prince. As we have mentioned before in our Cao Pi lore series, the main reason behind this was because Cao Pi no longer loved Lady Jin, as his interests had shifted to a few new concubines in Lady Guo, Lady Li, and Lady Yin. And of these three concubines, Cao Pi wanted to name his favorite, Lady Guo, to become his first empress. But as tradition dictate, the main wife should be the empress, especially in the case when the main wife is also the birth mother of the eldest son. So in the end, Cao Pi decided to kill Lady Jin to clear the way for Lady Guo, and this decision put Cao Rui in a very awkward spot, as while he was still the eldest son. Cao Pi started to have second thoughts about naming him as the crown prince. Luckily for Cao Rui, Lady Guo did not have any sons, but Cao Pi did have eight other surviving sons at this time, 
and for a brief moment, Cao Pi seriously considered naming his son Cao Li as the crown prince instead of Cao Rui. And all Cao Rui could do during this period was to not make any mistakes at all, as any small error could be used as an excuse by his father as a reason to banish him for good. And to find out how Cao Rui managed to survive this time and eventually return to his father's good grace, come back next time as we'll continue this series tomorrow to see how Cao Rui ascended the throne to become Wei's second emperor. So hopefully you all have enjoyed this episode enough to hit that like button to help support the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!